This is a human heart. Hearts pump blood around our bodies and oxygenate our organs. But what happens if a heart fails? Then we only have a very short time frame to act. Each year hearts fail in numerous people and over 4000 heart transplantations are performed. Unfortunately patients often have to wait for months until a suitable transplant is found. This means that valuable time is lost. So we need to find ways to make transplants ourselves. We've once talked about printing organs, but could we also grow human organs in other animals? A few weeks ago, scientists have successfully grown monkey embryos, which contain human cells. This technology could one day lead to the generation of human organs, but also raises a lot of ethical questions. And with that, my name is Kevin Steinek, and today we talk about human-monkey hybrids and how we might be able to grow organs. Okay, this is going to be a challenging video, so I want to make a short disclaimer. The technology we are going to discuss today is controversial and I am also critical of it. But it is important for us to understand how and why human monkey embryos have been made. So we do that and then we discuss the underlying ethics. Hybrids or chimeras are animals or plants which contain genetic information from two different species. So today we only focus on man-made animal hybrids. In order to understand how we make hybrids, we need to understand a few things about development. Development starts after an egg becomes fertilized by sperm cells. After this event, the fertilized egg becomes activated and starts to undergo cell division. Got it? Activated. So more and more cells are being made until a bowl of cells forms. In the beginning, each cell in this bowl is identical, but then a so-called blastocyst forms. The blastocyst is a stage where we can distinguish between two types of cells, trophoblasts on the outside and embryonic stem cells in the inside. And this is where it becomes very interesting now, and I think I've said this three times on my channel already. Embryonic stem cells are cells which can form all kinds of different cell types, including skin cells, heart cells or brain cells. In other words, we call them pluripotents, and stem cells together form all the different organs we find in our bodies. As you can imagine, stem cells have to communicate a lot with each other so that they know what kind of cells they should become. The underlying principles are very complicated but also very well orchestrated. And thank you for that, if stem cells were not able to communicate so well with each other, we might have some brain tissues in our legs or some heart muscles in our heads. And the blastocyst now also becomes crucial if we want to make human-monkey hybrids. In this technique, stem cells from one species is injected into the blastocyst of another. And to be more precise, we can inject human stem cells into monkey blastocysts. The injected human stem cells then exchange information with the monkey stem cells and they develop together. So we then can put the hybrid into a bioreactor for a while where it gets enough nutrients and oxygen to develop. But what I want to point out is that we normally do not use human stem cells from embryos. Instead we use so-called human-induced pluripotent stem cells. I made a video discussing how we make them a while ago, but in principle we can make them from skin cells and they are very very related to embryonic stem cells. But again they do not have anything to do with real embryos, we make them from skin. And this is how the first human monkey hybrids were made a few weeks ago. So the scientists injected human induced pluripotent stem cells into the blastocysts of monkeys. After one day, they were able to detect human cells in 132 of the injected embryos. And over 3 embryos survived for over 19 days in the bioreactors. And the scientists argued that they did not want to grow them further because it becomes ethically more and more dangerous the further we grow them. And this is also the main reason why most other hybrid studies have focused on animal-animal hybrids. And indeed, there have been some very striking results in growing organs. In 2017, scientists tried to find out whether they can cure diabetes in mice using mouse-rat hybrids. Diabetic mice have normally abnormal levels of blood sugar and insulin. Here the scientists injected mouse stem cells into rat blastocysts. But first the scientists genetically modified the blastocysts and destroyed a particular gene. 
This means that the rat blastocyst is not able to grow a pancreas on its own, but only the injected mouse cells can do so. After the hybrids were born, the pancreas was isolated. Then the isolated mouse pancreas was transplanted into diabetic mice. It was really found that blood sugar levels and insulin levels became normal. Another study focused on the generation of rat hearts in mice. This time a gene was disrupted in mouse blastocyst, which is important for making hearts. After the injection of rat stem cells, however, a heart could form. In this case, the heart was initially functional, but the embryos did not survive until birth. But you see, there are some successes in making animal-animal hybrid organs. So, and now to the elephant in the room. There are many ethical issues with this technology. This is the reason why you cannot conduct this kind of research in many countries or why it's heavily restricted. But let's go through some common questions. So obvious things first. Can human monkey hybrids survive birth? In this case, no. The embryos were grown outside the womb and here they cannot survive for very long. And scientists also didn't want to do that since this technology is very new and not controlled. Okay, but what if a human monkey hybrid is born? What are the issues? First of all, we do not really know which organs will be made from human or from monkey cells. And this is very problematic if we think about the brain or egg cells or sperm. We do not want any human brain cells in monkeys that would just not be ethical. And last but not least, how much are such experiments really restricted? In most countries, this kind of technology is completely forbidden or heavily restricted, but there are also some few examples where you can conduct such experiments. So the laws can be different between countries, but it's very important to really monitor what's going on here. So at the end, I also want to give you my personal take on this technique. And long story short, I'm not a fan, no, no. So that you know, I'm working with stem cells, but not with whole embryos. And I think that these kind of experiments should be very carefully planned. We need very responsible and transparent scientists and people who overlook them. And fortunately, this is largely happening. But I also see the point, many people are in great need of transplants. And numerous lives could be saved if we only found a way to make them in a laboratory. There are different ways for which we could make transplants and one of them is human-animal hybrids. But we could also try to print organs as we've covered it in a past episode. But for right now it seems like that human-monkey hybrids might give us the most sophisticated and biggest organs. And the thing is that we also do not know how each of these research branches will develop in the future. These technologies might directly lead to the generation of transplants or might lead to a new technology which then solves the issue. But in the end, I think the goal of every honest researcher is to improve the lives of others. And animal-animal hybrids could make a substantial contribution towards the fight against the pervasive organ shortage crisis. But as always, what do you think? What do you think about making organs from hybrids? Is it justifiable for you and would you accept such organs? I'm interested to know what you think. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and if so feel free to like this video and subscribe if you're new here and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the greatest and latest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya. If you're interested in printing organs, click on this video here. If you want to know more about how we can make stem cells from skin, this is the perfect video for you. 